You know, I, uh, today we're going to be talking about the Spirit-Led Life. And I'm very encouraged to see you all here because, you know, this, is, this weather, this Minnesota weather is nothing to play with. And, uh, you know, but for us who live by the Spirit, you know, we are guided by other things. We are, you know, we're not, we don't stop just because the weather's bad. We come out because we've got something to get. And uh, I love those songs Nikki sang today. Um, the, the one about let the fire, uh, fire come down. I love that, that was appropriate for today. And um, Nikki and I haven't spoken about what the subject is today, but each song that she chose is appropriate for what we're talking about today. So I'm gonna take this uh, Tic Tac out of my mouth. So it doesn't come flying out at an appropriate moment. <laughs> Hit somebody in the eye. And uh, so let us bow our heads in prayer uh, before we open. Gracious Father, I just thank you for all of us who are here today, Father, to hear the word. Father, I pray that it is your word that comes through. Father, the message that you have for all of us, I pray that that is the one that comes through. And Father, that I will be merely a participant as much as all those who have come to worship you. Father, I thank you for the message. I thank you for the sacrifice of your son so long ago. And Father, I just pray a blessing on the reading of your word in Jesus' name, amen. You know, um, one of the reasons why I chose this subject um, is because, you know, we're moving into a new year now, 2018. 2017 was real challenging for a lot of us. You know, many of us were challenged uh, emotionally. A lot of us were challenged in our bodies. Um, but, you know, it, it was a year of real challenges, and not just for us here at home, but across the world as well. I mean, in our city, we saw a lot of things happen in our city. You know, um, uh, bad things happening to, to seemingly good people. You know, there was a lot of upset, you know, um, a societal upset, political upset, I mean, just a uh, age, I mean, a year of real political upset, one thing after another, all the things that have been going on um, in other states, um, so much stuff coming out, turmoil, something new in the headlines every day, and not a lot of it is very good. Um, but not just here uh, in our backyards and in our state, but globally. And um, so I want to talk a little bit today about how we stay in what we call the spirit-led life. And I want to break that down a little bit too, because there are, there's terminology that we come to use when we um, you know, are connected to a church. And some of that terminology is what Nikki might call Christianese. Um, you know, it's typical to us who go to church and us who understand something of the church, but people who are not as familiar may not know what some of that means. And so there are people here who can give you exhaustive definitions if you want to know what that means. Carl Smith. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, life in the spirit. I'm talking about those of us who are in Christ, those of us who have been transformed from being led by our emotions to being led by Christ. There is, uh, John, can you, next one, so please, thank you. The verse that I want to refer you to and the verse I'm basing this on is taken from Galatians 2.20. And Galatians 2.20 reads, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. When we are saved, when we come into this new life that um, is exemplified by our baptism, and uh, many of us here uh, know what it is to be baptized, and we know what we intended by that baptism to let other people know by that outward example that there's been an inward change. And what we are... Uh, what we then experience, once we become saved, we develop a new nature. But we also become aware that there are now two forces at work in us. The forces that work, that continue to work in our flesh, you know, we can, our flesh doesn't go away. We still live in this flesh house. 
but there are also those that live, that work for the spirit. And we realize that our actions come down to, next slide please, two choices. We can either opt to obey the, the calling of the flesh, or we can opt to obey the spirit. And in the living of our testimony, as we walk this out, and when I say walk this out, I mean the, how we conduct ourselves so that other people know that there's been a change. So when I say the Christian walk, I'm talking about the day-to-day -day conduct that Christians should have so that other people know there's been a change. It's one thing to tell people there's been a change, but people need to see that there's been a change. There is no more powerful message than to show people what this is all about. And how we deal with the things that come up in life tells people how, um, what this life is all about. This is the part where we are really challenged though. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And we have three main areas where we're going to be attacked. One is in our members. And when I say that, I mean in our bodies. Okay? And there are a lot of us here today who know what it is to be attacked in our bodies. Okay? And we're also going to be attacked in our, uh, directly by the devil himself. We're also going to be attacked by world systems. You know, the world seeks a, a rightness or a goodness through the law. But those of us who live by faith seek not only rightness, but we seek righteousness through faith in God. So, there, but there are three things that we are going to be challenged by. One is the world, the other is the flesh, and the other is the devil. Next slide, please. I want to give you um, some biblical examples of carnal behavior. Uh, and these are taken from Galatians 5, verses 19 through 21. And it says, The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery. Idolatry and witchcraft. Hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy. Drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Just because we make that decision to live for God and to walk in the spirit doesn't mean our flesh is not going to be pulling at us every hour of the day. As long as we live in this body, this body is going to be acting up. We have a covering. We have a spiritual covering. But that flesh is going to be trying to peek out and be trying to raise up and assert itself from that covering every for everything we uh, encounter. Sexual immorality is a big one for a lot of people. And I tell you, I have seen so many examples of people that um, uh, have been walking in the spirit and have been living really good you know, lives. I mean, and by every, uh, every means, by all purposes, they really exemplify Christian life but they get trapped, they get tricked up and tripped up by sexual immorality. And we've all seen that. And the world is looking at that as well. And there are many people, many times when I've tried to share the gospel, but people say, yeah, I know. But, you know, I've seen what happens. I've seen some of these so-called Christians. I've seen pastors, and we've all seen them as well. And unfortunately, that hurts them, it hurts their testimony, and it hurts when we come along and we are trying to spread the word and share the word. Now we've got to deal with that as well. So it's important for us as Christians, all of us here, as we approach this new year, to remember our calling in every area of our lives. And it's not, I'm not saying it's easy. I don't want to say, you know, it's going to be hard, because it may not be hard for you but it may not be easy either. Idolatry and witchcraft, we have to watch out for those things as well. Anything can become, anything that tries to uh, assert itself in our life, anything that would try to raise itself above God in our lives becomes an idol. And we have to be on the lookout for things like that. Hatred, discord, jealousy. 
We have to make sure that we are the peacekeepers. People are going to be looking in times of strife when there is upset, whether it's in your life, in your uh, neighborhood, in your job, in your home. People are going to need a peacekeeper. And we have to be, we are called to be the peacekeepers in those instances. So the, the main point is that if you live like that, you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Next slide, please. Before, you know, when we showed the evidence of living in the flesh, the world is very accepting of us. But when we change and we start walking after the spirit, the world is not only going to expect evidence of that, but they're going to, um, well, they are going to expect evidence of that, but they may challenge you in those different areas as, as well. Your family may challenge you, people on the job are gonna challenge you, and they're going to be looking to see. In Galatians 5, 22 through 26, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against these things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying one another. Just as there are biblical examples of carnal behavior, you know, you can see that there are biblical standards of Spirit-led behavior. And this never stops and it never gets old. Those that are newly that newly come to Christ, this is just as challenging for them as it is for those who have been walking with Christ a long time. The challenges never stop. They just come in different shapes. But people are going to be looking. And this is something I have seen over the months in 2017 that won't be any different in 2018. People are going to be looking to see, do you show joy? You know, what does joy look like in your life? Are you able to maintain joy? Will you choose joy even when things get hard? Are you going to choose joy like everybody else is choosing anger? They're going to look to you to see what does that look like. And not just the older Christians, but the newer ones too. Do you opt or support peace? When everybody else is screaming for somebody's neck, are you going to be the one that comes into the middle of that situation and tries to calm the waters? Do you show kindness? Today, it can be very challenging to show kindness when there is so much going on, not just in the political arena, but all the accusations that are flying back and forth today and people that are coming forward with, with um, you know, experiences, things that have happened to them, you know, privately. They thought they were the only one, and they're finding out that I wasn't the only one, that there are other people too. Excuse me. Mouth gets very dry. Oh, I've got coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Most people will stand here with water. I bring coffee. That's why I've taken very good care of this cup. I don't want anything to happen to this because it carries the coffee. <laughs> but, um, but people are going to be looking to see, do we show kindness? You know, one of the toughest things on a day like today, as cold as it is out there, I was so grateful when I walked in that door and that little heater was there, and the first thing that hit me was that blast of heat. That was... I appreciate that, Pastor Jim. Thank you. <laughs> but it also took my mind back to the people that are living up under bridges. The other day I was on my way to work, and I, and I went up under this bridge, and I saw this cardboard going across the bridge, and I saw feet sticking out at the end, and I realized somebody's living there. And it broke my heart that in this kind of weather, there are people who, for whatever reasons, have to live like that. Sometimes, you know, circumstances brought them there. Sometimes their own choices brought them there. But for whatever reason, there are people that are living in this kind of weather outdoors. And these are the times when we must show kindness. Do we show gentleness? And let me tell you something, a lot of Christians 
This is the one that stops a lot of Christians because they think, hey, I can be loving, I can be joyful, I can be peaceful, I can be forbearing, kindness, I can show that, I can be faithful, but gentleness, wait a minute, does that mean that I have to turn the other cheek and, does, and, and what does that mean? Gentleness does not mean that we are here to be walked on or stepped on or pushed around. Gentleness means that we simply don't respond in our own self, out of our own flesh. Next slide, please. Even when Jesus, was, as he was being crucified, he could have easily responded, you know, with the power of heaven, but he didn't do that. Meekness is simply stepping back and letting God take care of it. Okay? It's not meaning that we have to suddenly change from being, um, for us, you know, guys, we don't have to stop being guys and suddenly, you know, um, you know, change the definition of manhood. That's not what it means. It means simply stepping back and not letting our flesh jump up to address a situation. And I know so many situations that have gotten worse because we as Christians have to assert ourselves. That's when our flesh rises up. And you have to be, we all have to be on guard against our flesh all the time. You know, because our flesh rises up like a python. I don't know if any of you have ever seen a python strike or a rattlesnake strike. It is quick and it is sudden and there is no warning. You no, know, they can be sitting there like that one minute and the next minute before you know it, they have, re I can't do it as fast as they do it. But before you know it, they've reached out and they've hit you and you just feel something smack you and you don't know what's it. Wait a minute, you know, that thing bit me. But that's the way our flesh is. It rises up quickly and when it, our flesh rises up, it can be just as deadly. The thing we have to remember is that we are walking testimonies all the time. And in our members, for what that means for us in our members, um, again, that means trusting in God, putting our, knowing that our strength comes from God. And it means taking a, more, a humble attitude as opposed to arrogant pride. You know, when we operate in the flesh, that is when the temptation for our pride to come up. That's when we're thinking, you know, I did that, you know, as opposed to, you know, thank God, you know, praise you, God, for taking care of that. You know, we want to stand up. We want to take the credit. A spirit-controlled person is very different than a self-controlled person, and we have to remember that. Being spirit-controlled gives us the ability to overcome the abilities, the, I mean, I'm sorry, the old behaviors of the old carnal nature. It gives us the ability to overcome things like sexual immorality, idolatry, drunkenness, etc. It gives us a real humble attitude towards God. A humble person will not fight God. And, you know, um, even another example of a humble person was Joseph. You know, um, next slide, please. When Joseph, um, you know, when his brothers had come, you know, he could have easily said, you know what, you guys sold me. You know, a long time ago, and now this is payback day. You know, but he didn't do that. You know, he said, God has saved me, you know, um, to take care of you. And not just you, but all, all of us. I'm sorry, John, you can go back for just a moment, please. So, we have uh, our members, that's one battlefield. You know, so many people, as I said before, so many people hit by illness this year. And when we are hit like that, it is, man, I'm telling you, it's so easy to focus on the illness and to let that illness then affect our emotions. But what we need to do at, at times like those, that's when we are needed most to be an example to other people of how to go through things. People are looking for examples. Of how do I deal like that? Okay, deal with that. Okay, you're saying have joy all the time. You're saying be for, being forbearing. But how, what does that look like? How does that look like? Now that you're the one going through, let's see how you do it. And they need examples to do that. But we can't do it ourselves. And if we try to do it ourselves, we are going to fail every time. You see people that, 
get depressed and um, physical adversity. That's why, because they're trying to do it in their own power. And I'm not saying that things like that aren't tough, can't be tough. I've been through it myself. But those are the times when we have to be the example. The world has to see an example of what it is to put your faith and your trust in God and choose an attitude that continues to spread the word and, sh and show people what the gospel looks like as it's being lived. Second thing I have up here, this one of the second battlefields is direct attacks from the devil. You know, our adversary. Man, I'm telling you, our adversary is very real. And the battlefield for him is not just here in Minneapolis. It's not just in my house. It's not just in my neighborhood. It's global. When we are living a spirit-led life, our battlefield is not just here where we live and shop and work. It's global. That's why we have opportunities like Watchers on the Wall. We come out on Friday so that we can join together corporately to pray for some of the issues that are happening across the globe. That is where our battlefield is, and we have power and authority. We've been given power and authority to do battle there. But so many Christians, I can't tell you, I don't come here every Friday, but I've come here enough to know that quite often there aren't that many of us here when there could be more of us. You know, I'm making it a point this year to come out more because that's where the power is. We have to rely on Jesus. You know? Jesus is also our ultimate example of resisting temptation and spiritual warfare. When he was under direct attack from Satan, when he was tempted in the wilderness, each temptation was combated with the words, it is written. That's why it's important for each of us to know the word of God. Every single one of us has more information on our telephone than people did 20 years ago, than a lot of people did 20 years ago in their library, in their library in their home. There's, a lot, of, a lot of us have more information on our phones than public libraries, some public libraries do, about Christian living, Christian life. So it's important for us to make use of that. When you come here, we all have Bible studies that we have access to um, Wednesday night. You can come study under Pastor Jim. Tammy and I have Bible study upstairs. There, there are people downstairs. Even if uh, you have a child and you want to sit with your child, there are people downstairs. That, um, that take care of the children, that uh, Kelly and whoever's sister, uh, Linda, whoever's down there with her can sit with you and study the word with you. Even if you want to watch your child on a Wednesday night when you come, there are people that will sit with you. But the fact is that we have, um, that we have to stand firm. We're being attacked in our members, which is our body. We get um, uh, attacked, direct attacks by the devil. And then, I'm sorry, John, can you go back for just a moment, please? The last one is world systems. Now you can go ahead, please. Yeah, that right there. I know you can't read all of that, okay? So I'm going <laughs> to say a few for you. I know it's very tiny, only I didn't realize it was going to be quite that tiny. I, you know, it looks bigger on my computer. Uh, life lesson. Um, but there are world systems we have to be aware of. And, oh man, I'm telling you, there are things happening in the world that can make you very angry. Even if you're a Christian, you still got to get angry about some things that happen. But there are world systems we have to be on guard against. And we also have to be in prayer about these world systems. I'm not going to try to read all of these because it is really tiny and I realize it's hard for you to follow along. But let me read just a few. World systems produce conformity to cultural norms or traditions of men. They make use of force, greed, ambition, and warfare to accomplish objectives. They uh, are permissive sexually, morally, and ethically. They ignore eternal values and invisible realities. They take no note of the invisible, the spiritual. They gloss over and hide suffering, death, poverty, and the depravity of man and our accountability to God. 
They teach human progress and advancement through better education or social welfare. Now some of these things, there's nothing wrong with better education. There's nothing wrong with social welfare. But to rely on that as the answer to the betterment of humankind, the ultimate betterment of humankind, is a gross mistake. Okay? The only answer for us is God and the blood of Jesus. John 15, verses 18 through 20 says, If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. Because you will be hated. Man, if you come against, if you go against these things, you're going to be hated. People are going to dislike you. If you try to speak up, man, and if you think I'm kidding, just think to yourself, any of you that, you know, you have your job, think about what would happen tomorrow if you went into work and said, you know what? Why don't we all get together for a little prayer before we start work? Imagine the response you would receive. Most of us, now there may be some of you out here that would be encouraged by the response you get, but most of us, people would look at us like we're crazy. You know, prayer. First of all, what right have you got to tell me, you know, that I should be praying to your God? You know, what makes your God the only God? You know, any, any number of responses you would get. But the thing is, there is a world out there that will hate us for our behavior, for our beliefs. But um, in John 15, verses 18 through 20, we read, if the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belong to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Remember what I told you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. If they obeyed my teaching, they will obey yours also. That is the encouraging part of that, um, of those phrases, of those verses. If they obeyed my teaching, they will obey yours also. But it takes perseverance. It takes us living this out. It takes us walking this out. It takes us showing them by our conduct that this is a life that can be lived and that God answers prayer. And the prayer he is answering is our account not only our accountability, but our ability to be accountable, our ability to live a life that, um, that can be accountable to God. We cannot live that life only in our flesh. Next one, please. And so I have a few questions, I think, excuse me, again with the dryness. I think it is good for all of us at times to assess how we are living our lives and to see how we're living in, um, uh, uh, you know, in, in opposition or how we're living um, our spiritual life out and how, how we're being different um, to the world. And so I put a few questions here and there you can... Uh, have your own questions, but I put a few of these there. I don't know if you can read these any better. Oh, yeah, okay. But, you know, number one is, what is my attitude toward the, towards the circumstances in my life? Um, uh, Pastor Jim has often given us an example of how two people can be born in the same circumstances, and one person will use uh, those circumstances as an excuse not to rise above or not to live a successful life, and the other person will use it as a reason to live a successful life or to overcome. And so sometimes we have to do an inventory to ask ourselves and to see how we're uh, allowing God to, and how in, allowing the Holy Spirit to um, uh, live or to exert himself or to um, show others to be, to be exemplified in our lives. And so, um, when you have time, you know, set aside some time to ask yourself, this year, this new year, are you allowing life circumstances to separate you from God? Are you putting unwavering faith in Him, or do you put more faith in man, or what man can do? You know, and how are you sharing the gospel? You know, there was a time when I, um, I might have shared the gospel with a real fire and brimstone kind of, you know, come down on people, and I found that people really didn't like that. 
you know, that was very off-putting to a lot of people. And so I had to learn how to approach people with a more gentle approach. And I found that that worked with a lot of people. And I found that people, I was more approachable to people who were going through things when they thought I was more approachable. People, when they don't want to approach somebody, it's going to turn around and, ah, yes, you come to the right person because God is going, ah. They don't want that. They want somebody, yes, okay, I agree, I understand. Let's go over here and sit down and talk, take some time. So we have to realize that, you know, we are, we are an option for people. What kind of option are we doing? <coughs> and not only that, but how are we responding ourselves to life's issues? And don't forget that people are looking at us. Are we letting the enemy steal our joy or are we taking authority over circumstances? Do we put human limits on God's power? Next slide, please. James um, chapter 1, verse 20, verses 23 to 25. I'm closing now. This is something that I have seen, and I have prayed against it every time, and I have prayed that God will um, exert his influence and exert his spirit in people's lives. All of us pray for things. We pray for responses from the Holy Spirit. We pray for changes. We need changes. And really, for us, God is the only solution. He's the, the only answer for all of us. James 1, 23 through 25 says, Anyone who listens to the word but, but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. And the reason I, I'm reading this verse to you, showing this verse to you, is because Sadly, I have seen too many times, not, and I'm not saying it's here in this church, but I'm just saying in general, out in the community, even other people I know who are Christians, who know what the Word of God is. They can quote the Word, but they have forgotten too many times circumstances come at them and they have forgotten what authority they have been given. And so I want to remind you, don't be like this person in James. Remember, see, the adversary wants you to forget. He wants you to be so shaken that you will forget. He wants the circumstances to be so overwhelming and to appear so vast that you will forget who you are. You will, you will forget the authority you've been given. And when you forget the authority you've been given, man, I'm telling you, you know, then we're just... You know, we're, we're wide open for attack. We've all been given authority to overcome. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, that's the key. You have to continue in it. Not forgetting what they've heard, but doing it. They will be blessed in what they do. People ask for everything. I've seen God answer one prayer after another. But sometimes it's in the answer that people begin to turn away. You know, God answers that prayer and suddenly, man, they forget about, they forget where it came from. They forget where the answer came from. You know, well, I got this. And suddenly that becomes the object of their affection. That becomes the object of their attention. And they forget all about God, you know? So the thing is to remember the source of our power, the source of our freedom. Next slide, please. This last slide is taken from Galatians 5, verse 1. And it says, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. And I was so glad when Nikki sang that song, No Longer Slaves. Because we are born into slavery. You know, when you're born into slavery, man, I'm telling you, there... Over, over uh, time, there have been many races of people that have raised up generations born in slavery. They don't know any other way of life. You know, when you're born in slavery, that's all you know. You know, this is, this is how things are. I don't, know what it, I don't know what things are like over the hill, because we're not allowed to go over there. 
You know, I got the shackle on me. I can't, we can't even go out the front gate. I don't even know what's across the street. But we are no longer slaves. We are not bound by the things of this world. And let me tell you something, that's where prayer comes in. Because as I said before, and I can't say this enough, our battlefield is not limited to this block, this city, this state. Our battlefield is global, it is spiritual, and our power and authority is not just given for the confines of Minneapolis or Minnesota. Our power and authority is for the world, and that's why we've been given that power and authority. The Greeks, there's a, a word I want to share with you. There's a Greek word, auto, that means self. And there's another word, nomos, which means law. And when you put them together, you get autonomous. And when people are acting autonomously, they're a law unto themselves. We must be on guard to never be acting autonomously. When we are saved and when we are justified and we are bound to the spirit and living a life of faith, we are not acting autonomously. Our power is not our own, and our authority is certainly not our own. So we have to be ready at all times. We have to live the word. We have to live the life and the word that we're called to live. We have to make sure that we are forming new habits. Man, our, our old habits, those habits that we formed in the flesh, have got to be done away with. They have to be set aside. The world has got to be, see something different. So... For 2018, remember, this is somewhat basic, I know, life in the spirit, but the challenges never stop. And it doesn't matter if you're newly saved or you've been saved for 10 years or 20 or 30 or more. The flesh is always going to, as long as you live here, you're going to have the challenges of living in this house. But we've been given authority and power to go beyond and to live bigger. So that's what I want you to remember. 